CEO of Carroll Daniel Construction Company. We'd like to welcome you to the 2021 State of the Schools here at the new East Forsyth High School. Carroll Daniel Construction Company is proud to be the construction manager for East Forsyth, as well as several other recent projects in, uh, in Forsyth County, uh, Pools Mill Elementary School, the Alliance Academy for Innovation, uh, and the Forsyth County Arts and Learning Center. Uh, along with many, many more over the years. And uh, you'll hear a little bit more about a few of those later today. Carol Daniel is a general contractor and construction manager based in Gainesville, Georgia, uh, with offices in Atlanta and Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, this is our 75th anniversary. So uh, 75 years ago this year, 1946, my grandfather founded this business. Well, we've been partnering with Forsyth County almost since inception. I know our first project of the school system there was in 1961. We built Midway Elementary School. Uh, so very proud to have a long, long relationship and history with Forsyth County Schools uh, and looking forward to many more exciting years to come together. Carolina Construction Company is so proud to be a part of the Forsyth County Schools community and really excited about today's program. Let's get started. Good morning. Uh, welcome. My name is Derek Brooks. I'm the chair elect of the uh, Forsyth County Chamber of Commerce. Now, the word elect is very important. That means this is not my actual job. This is total practice for me for next year. So should I lose my words or forget what I'm supposed to say? Remember, it's just practice. So I'd like to welcome you all to the 2021 State of the Schools uh, uh, event. We have a different style of event today. Um, we have a hybrid event. So we're, we're hosting an in-person element for our people here in the room. And we also have many viewers online. We'd like to thank Mr. Cheney and all the East Forsyth High School staff for letting us uh, use their beautiful space, especially start with school starting in two days. Stay the Schools gives the uh, Forsyth County business community and the community at large an opportunity to celebrate the accomplishments of our school system and to hear some exciting uh, plans for its future. The past year was significant for our school system and we've excelled in many ways. Let me read this awesome list. In the uh, Metro Atlanta County districts and among the large districts in Georgia, Forsyth County Schools has the highest CCRPI score, the highest county graduation rate, the highest ACT score, the highest SAT score, and the highest financial efficiency rating, five out of five stars. We also need to celebrate that 52% of, of adults in Forsyth County have a bachelor's degree compared to 31% of adults in Georgia. These statistics that any county in the nation would desire to have do not happen by accident. They happen because of the people attending today and especially the partners, uh, partnerships between the community and our schools. These partnerships create a thriving economy that provide a high quality of life for all Forsyth County citizens. We have a full program uh, planned today, but before we begin, I'd like to ask you uh, and stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As the chamber uh, helps businesses to thrive, we also encourage and provide opportunities for them to form partnerships in the community. Among the community partnerships uh, championing the educational efforts are today's sponsors, and I'd like to recognize them now. Our title sponsor is North Forsyth Hospital. Uh, nope, that's not correct. Our title sponsor is Northside Hospital Forsyth. <laughs> that other one's a whole different hospital I've never heard of. Uh, our platinum sponsor is Carol Daniel Construction. Our bottled water sponsor is Brandywine Printing. Our broadcast, broadcast sponsor is Delta Community Credit Union. Our program sponsor is Georgia Power. Our chair sponsor is Beaver Toyota. Our stage sponsor is Corner Farms. Our website sponsor is AmeriPro EMS. Our gold sponsors are Forte Data Systems. Georgia United Credit Union and Central EMS. Our silver sponsor is Triscapes. Our bronze sponsors are River Valley Ingredients, Bryan Properties, and the University of North Georgia. Today's program would not be possible without their continued support. Please join me in thanking them.
In addition to our presenters, we're also joined by many elected officials today. Uh, we have Chair of our County Commission, Cindy Mills, Commissioner Laura Samanson, County Manager Kevin Tanner, Chair of our Board of Education, Kristen Morsey, Board of Education Member Wes McCall, Board of Education Member Darla Light, Board of Education Member Lindsey Adams, Board of Education Member Tom Cleveland, School Superintendent Jeff Bearden, and Chief Deputy Joe Perkins. Please give a round of applause for all our community leaders and thank you for your dedicated service. The title sponsor of the State of the Schools is Northside Hospital for Scythe. Northside has been an outstanding community uh, and school partner for nearly two decades, but the way they partnered with our community recently was exceptional from providing frontline care to sharing highly sought after supplies to supporting the community vaccination cl clinics. They expanded their care well beyond the hospital walls. Please join me in welcoming Lynn Jackson. I don't remember her title because it's not written down here, but she's a big wig over there at Northside for, for Scythe. <laughs> Thank you, Derek, for that very precise introduction. Um, I appreciate that. Good morning, everybody. It's great to see all of you. Really, it is great to see everybody. Um, I haven't been out a whole lot, so it's really good to be around people and get to see you. Um, I'm going to remove my mask just while I'm speaking, but um, thank you all for being here. It's Northside's pleasure to get to be a sponsor of this event again this year. Um, congratulations to the Board of Education, the citizens of Forsyth County, the staff of this wonderful high school, and most importantly to the students whose lives will be forever better and their futures better because of a wonderful facility like this one and the vision uh, to create something like this. So my congratulations and congratulations on behalf of everyone at Northside for this wonderful, wonderful school. And for all the accomplishments that our school system has put forward, um, this is, you know, a, a very rare community, and we're all so lucky to be here. Northside considers itself so fortunate to be in this community and be such a part of it. So uh, we come to today, and I, uh, it's my pleasure to get to introduce to you one of our favorite staff members and the, our medical staff and let him talk to you just a little bit about student health and about sports medicine. I'd like to introduce you today to uh, Dr. Mark Saker. He serves as our program director for our non-operative sports medicine at Northside Hospital Institute of Orthopedics. Dr. Saker completed his residency at Duke University in family medicine, where he served as a chief resident, and then he did a sports medicine fellowship training at UNC Chapel Hill. He practiced sports medicine while at Duke after completing his training, where he served as a team physician for the Carolina Hurricanes of the NHL, as well as he was also the team physician for um, Duke University Athletics. He then joined the faculty of University of Pittsburgh Medical Center, where he was the head team physician for Robert Morris University and medical consultant for UMP, UM, UPMC, excuse me, Concussion Center. In 2018, Dr. Saker moved to Atlanta to take on the role as the program director within the sports medicine program at Northside Hospital. He takes care of active individuals of all ages, and he serves as the head team physician for Georgia State University Athletics. Please join me today in welcoming Dr. Saker. Hey, good morning. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, everyone, so far this morning. This is exciting to be here and see such an amazing campus, an amazing school that has developed in the last few months here in uh, Forsyth County. So our role at Northside Hospital, uh, Orthopedic Institute and in Sports Medicine is really looking to keep people active and be engaged in our communities. It's one of the most important things and one of the core principles that we have as we've developed this program over the past several years is really looking at how we can better be parts of our communities, not only where all of our providers and physicians live, but where they work, where they play, and you know, really investing that time and energy. And that's one of the things we've done when it's come to outreach and working with high schools. We've been engaged very closely with 
several schools here in Forsyth County, and we're excited to be the team physicians and medical staff here at East Forsyth, which is amazing. Uh, we've also been community partners and sponsors of all of the schools here, even if we aren't on the sidelines. And that really shows the dedication of Northside Hospital and the effort and energy we want to put into where we live and where we want to grow. So it's been a privilege to grow us alongside Forsyth County in this way. And what we like to see is really having our providers and our staff really in, ingrain themselves with the community and the schools. So you'll see us half an hour, hour before the football game start, shaking hands, meeting people, talking with the coaches and the parents and the players themselves, and really investing that energy and time in which we think is truly important. And I think that that's what makes a good partnership and, and uh, collaboration rather than just a sponsorship. I know the checks are important, but the actually being a part of the community is what we value most. And so part of our program is really looking at not just taking care of athletes that put on jerseys, but anybody that's active, that wants to be pain-free, wants to stay out of getting into trouble with injuries and things like that, and just wants to be uh, able to engage in the things they're passionate about. And so that's really our goal at the Orthopedic Institute and sports medicine particularly, we really want to encircle our patients, our students, our athletes with experts and specialists from concussion care, fracture care, sprain strains, uh, even things like dietetics and nutrition. Um, so a little bit of everything, we want to really provide those resources to everyone in our community. So that's really what we've been passionate about and we've been really grateful and privileged to be partners alongside Forsyth County and the school district. So we really appreciate you all inviting us, having us here and really welcoming us into the community. So thank you so much for your time and, and your attention today. Thank you, Dr. Syker. Um, I echo exactly what he was saying. It's just our pleasure to be a part of events like this as well as being on the fields and being part of the action. Um, but Northside Hospital, as well as we take pride in being a partner with our school system, but we know that the school system, you know, could not be where it is today if it were not the, from the support for many community partners. So I'd like to direct your attention to the screen to hear from some of the partners that are joining Northside and championing today's event. Carolina supports Forsyth County Schools because they've been a partner of ours for many, many years. They've been a business partner. We've done business built buildings in Forsyth County. Uh, but just as importantly, we've participated with Forsyth County in uh, uh, having their young people involved in our workplace learning programs here in our business. Uh, they've gone on to become interns, uh, our employee base, part of which lives in Forsyth County. Uh, uh, their children are educated in the schools, so we're uh, truly partners in both sense of the word. Georgia Power is proud to be a part of the Forsyth County School community by supporting programs that enhance and encourage our teachers like our education coordinators that work side by side with our teachers on the Learning Power curriculum, our partnership with the Junior Achievement Center, and our support of the celebration of excellence and new educator orientation. Corner Farms is excited to be a part of the East Forsyth High School Community Center, where our private foundation can provide immediate and ongoing assistance to families and individuals through leadership, mentorship, counseling, and support. Delta Community Credit Union is proud to support Forsyth County students through initiatives like virtual field trips and our scholarship fund. Thank you, Dr. Saker and Lynn. Uh, Northside Hospital takes pride in, hang on a second, is this what I'm supposed to be reading? Let's, I'm just going to keep on going. We'll see what happens. Uh, nope, that's not where I'm supposed to be. Thank you, Dr. Saker and Lynn. Uh, thank you again to all of our supporters. Our chair's sponsor is uh, Beaver Toyota. Beaver Toyota is a longtime partner with Forsyth County Schools and 2020 recipient of the Friend of the School Award. They continuously work f uh, with Forsyth County Schools Education Foundation and multiple schools in the system through monetary donations and supporting the recognitions of, of students and educators. 
please join me in thanking Beaver Toyota. On, beha on behalf of Beaver Toyota, it's my pleasure to introduce our Board of Education Chair, Kristen Morrissey. Kristen Morrissey studied microelectronic engineering at Rochester Institute of Technology. She received her degree in computer science from SUNY MCC. She worked in corporate training at Eastman Kodak and later retired from the Rochester Public Library, Monroe County Library System after 16 years of service. As an automation specialist and trainer, Ms. Morrissey is a 2009, uh, <laughs> periods are important. Ms. Morrissey is a uh, 2009 graduate of the Leadership for Scythe uh, and a Georgia Academy for Economic Development, Regional Economic, Regional Economic and Leadership Development. She and her husband, Joe, have two girls, one a graduate of Georgia Tech, and their youngest is a senior at Lambert High School. Ms. Morrissey currently serves as chair of the Forsyth County Boards of Education. She's the secretary treasurer of Forsyth County uh, Library Board of Trustees. She's the chair of the board of directors of Forsyth County Parks Foundation. She's a board member at the Georgia Department of Early Care and Learning, Bright Star, uh, Congressional District 7 rep. She is the chair of the board of directors of the Peachtree Parkway Improvement District. Welcome, Kristen. Thank you, Derek. Good morning. Welcome everyone to this amazing new school, East Forsyth High. I hope you're enjoying it so far. For those of you who are watching online, be sure to take the virtual tour of East Forsyth High at the end of the program. I would like to acknowledge once again, my fellow board members, Vice Chair Wes McCall, Darla Light, Tom Cleveland, Lindsay Adams, and of course our superintendent, Dr. Jeff Bearden. So what is the state of Forsyth County Schools? I think I can sum up the past year with the opening of one of my favorite classic novels. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. But seriously, a lot of people in education have said that the last year was by far the hardest year they've ever experienced. Social distancing, contact tracing, temperature checking, the wearing of masks, or not, Zoom meetings, Tim meetings, Google Meets, and everyone's favorite, you're on mute, it really wore us down. Whether you were a teacher, administrator, bus driver, nurse, student, or a parent teaching coach, it was tough. But it was also a year when the entire community came together to make the best of a hard situation, and we are so very grateful for everyone for going above and beyond every single day. So how do we do it? Early last summer, the governance team was dealing with a budget deficit of over $23 million. And yet, we were determined to open our schools on time, safely, and give our families a choice. As a team, we agreed raising taxes, increasing class sizes, and a reduction of force were not options we would even consider. We dug deep, we embraced the challenge, and we made some bold decisions to make our finances work. And we did it. Schools opened in August, and our families had choices. We offered both face-to-face -face and virtual instruction from kindergarten to 12th grade. Provisions and plans were put into place to assure students throughout the county had the electronic resources they needed to make their learning environment work at both at home and at school. Staff spent extra time to prepare families with special needs children who chose the virtual option. Teachers instructed these parents or their learning coaches on ways to get hands-on support for those students that they needed to succeed. That collaboration also often resulted in huge gains for the students as a result of everyone working together. I just find it amazing that our, virtual, our students were able to work in virtual environment for special needs. I think that's going above and beyond for our staff. Thank you, Sarah Taylor, for that effort. Principals also shared their teachers and resources beyond their school walls to accommodate the schedule of our students across the entire school system. Our community and businesses helped to get meals, PPE, and other supplies to our teachers, children, and our families. The school system provided support and encouragement to students and staff while they were home in quarantine. 
teachers recorded presentations for open houses and curriculum nights, allowing our families to get information safely and at their own convenience. Those virtual sessions were so well received, we plan to continue those recordings this year. Meanwhile, we still had 41 schools, 51,500 students, 6,000 employees to manage, and several new schools and facilities under construction. And of course, because we're Forsyth County, we had redistricting to start in the fall. Throughout the year, we were still able to hold sporting events, concerts, proms, and have in-person graduations for both the class of 2020 and 2021. We really felt it was important for the students to have that celebration with their families. This year, we had our highest graduation rate at 96.1%, and we went on to celebrate the seven high school graduations with 3,732 graduates. 2021 was also a special year as we attended the graduation of the inaugural class of the Alliance Academy for Innovation, our college and career high school. Project Life had 10 graduates this year with one from Project Rise. Project Life is a training program that provides job readiness skills for our adult students with developmental disabilities. And talk about growing our own. We just found out that Tabitha Jones, one of this year's Project Life graduates, interviewed for and got a position at one of our middle schools as a cafeteria worker. Donna Jones, Tabitha's mother, stated, Teachers are willing to go the extra mile, which gives me peace of mind to know Tabby will be okay as she goes into the working world, because, because you all have taken the time to help her learn what she needs to succeed. It's business partners like Siemens, Automation Direct, NCR, North, Northside Hospital for Scythe, PBD Worldwide, and several of our own schools that make these opportunities and accomplishments for our special needs happen. Now that we've wrapped up the school year, let's take a moment to watch a video highlighting the academic and fiscal accolades that our community has come to expect and take pride in year after year. that video from our communications department. Thank you. In 2015, the Forsyth County Education Foundation was created to support innovative teaching and increase student achievement. In 2016, the foundation provided $240,000 in grants for our students and teachers. Last year's Duck Dive fundraiser set a new record with an adoption of 6,266 ducks, raising over $115,000.
This year's top winner was one lucky duck winning a cool $10,000 prize. Education grants will be awarded in their schools this month on Friday, August 27th. Several cool school construction projects are now complete. Hendricks Middle School and the new Academies of Creative Education Building that houses our three non-traditional programs, Forsyth Virtual Academy, Forsyth Academy, and Gateway Academy are now done and ready to go. And of course, this school, East Forsyth High, where we are today, is opening this week as well. So here we are, it's August. Our schools are all stocked, cleaned, and open for business. Our enrollment continues to rise and we anticipate opening the doors to over 52,000 students in just two days. To teach all of those kids, we welcomed over 360 new teachers last week at our new educators orientation. They're all eager and ready as well to open, the, open their doors to the students. So here are some, some fun facts about the educators who chose Forsyth County Schools as their new family. 62 were former Forsyth County substitutes or paraprofessionals. 32 are teachers coming back to work in Forsyth County. 34 new educators are from 18 different states outside of Georgia. That's why everybody's moving and needing new houses in our county. 80 are recent college graduates from 22 different universities, with the most coming from the University of North Georgia. And finally, 182 of the new educators, or just over half, are joining us from other school districts, private schools, or the private sector. Beyond our teachers, pre preparations continue outside, as you've probably seen the big yellow buses out practicing their routes. So speaking of, if anybody wants to come out of retirement, we're always hiring school bus drivers, so if you want to get on the bus with about 40 or 50 like really excited, happy children, we'd love to have you. Thursday's coming, we're ready to go. Expert degree, having students back in the classroom whenever possible and serving the whole child is critical to their education and well-being. With over 90% of our students returning to face-to-face -face, face -face instruction this year, the majority of our students prefer the face-to-face -face environment as well. Like last year, we want our students and staff to be safe. Dr. Bearden and staff will continue to meet with and receive daily reports from local, state, and federal agencies and use that information to make informed decisions on a day-to-day -day and a school-by-school -school basis. The system is sending out parents information this morning with updated guidelines for school opening. So looking forward, later this year, our SPLOS 6 referendum will be on the November ballot. If passed by the voters, SPLOS 6 will be a continuation of the current one cent sales tax. The renovations and new construction projects from the 2018 bond and the SPLOS 5 projects are almost complete. Facility staff can now start to shift their focus to ongoing maintenance and life cycle needs. SPLOS revenues also allow for a more pay-as-you-go model as opposed to calling for general obligation bonds that saves taxpayer, taxpayers millions in interest payments. With the completion of New Hope Elementary next year and the re replacement of Midway Elementary thereafter, we expect to be in decent shape with growth for a while. As SPLOS revenues can continue to be as steady as they have been, we anticipate being able to lower the bond millage rate over time as previous bond commitments are paid down. So let me repeat that and sum it up because this is something that's really exciting for the board and Dr. Bearden. Our hope is that if SPLOS 6 passes this fall and the growth remains at the level it has been, we do not anticipate the need for a bond for the next five years or more and we hope to start, start lowering the bond millage rate over time as well. I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Let's hope. Later this fall, we start our district accreditation with Cognia, followed by the launch of a five-year strategic planning process. In reviewing the last few years' State of the School speeches, I found this one phrase from 2019. How do we create a culture and climate where students feel safe? It went on to say, by creating a culture and climate where every child matters. A culture and climate where students have a sense of purpose and belonging. A culture and climate where every child is respected and valued. I am so glad to see two years later that basic principle has not changed within our system. As Dr. Bearden said at our last meeting, we are a high performing school system. Our students achieve at an incredibly high level and we have outstanding teachers. Everyone wants Forsyth County Schools to continue on the path of greatness, where every single student, all 52,000 of them, receives a quality education. 
As we have in the past, we will work closely with our community stakeholders to get feedback on the direction and the future of Forsyth County Schools. We're going to come together, share ideas, and do so with respect that each and every one deserves. And again, as Dr. Bearden said, let's model for our children what our children deserve moving forward. I sincerely hope this goal is something we can all agree to strive for. I would now like to introduce some of the key people that helped make this past year the success it was. Would you please join me on stage? Mr. Matt Work, our Chief Facilities Director, Officer. Ms. Leanne Rice, the Associate Superintendent of Teaching and Learning. Dr. Valerie Lowe, the Director of College and Career Development, or CTAE. And Ms. Dawn Phillips, the Director of Focal, our new Countywide Performing Arts Center. Welcome. Have a seat. All right, first up, Leanne. <laughs> Teaching and learning in a virtual environment last year was a challenge for both teachers and students. What would you say were the successes and the lessons we learned from having been online a lot last year? Yeah, Kristen, I think last year was one of our most challenging years in education, but I would venture to say it was also one of our best. When you think about what we went through last year and what we were able to achieve, it's just extraordinary. At our district leadership retreat uh, just last month in June, I shared a quote with our leaders uh, from John Mark Green, and it said, you are not the darkness you endured, you are the light that refused to surrender. And that's how I think of our staff in Forsyth County Schools. We refused to surrender. We faced many challenges. And when you think about what our teachers and leaders, our bus drivers, our custodians, our food service assistants, what they all had to go through, how they changed their jobs to get the work done and to do extraordinary work. It was simply amazing. Last year, we started with approximately 40% of our students in a virtual environment. Now, we had a program for Scythe Virtual Academy that was ready to handle our middle school and high school students, but we had nothing for elementary. And so very quickly, we formed a group of people who worked together to create an elementary curriculum, put it on an elementary platform, on our It's Learning platform, and work with our teachers to prepare them for the beginning of the school year last year. It was extraordinary. We also spent our school year making sure that the teachers who moved into that virtual environment were prepared because quite a few had to make a shift, and that was a huge sacrifice. We worked with our teachers throughout the year to provide professional learning opportunities with our elementary teachers. We met with them weekly, virtually, with both professional learning and planning sessions. With our middle and high school teachers, we created uh, content curriculum builds, and we brought our content specialists who are experts in the curriculum, along with our instructional designers from Forsyth Virtual Academy, and most importantly, the teachers who were teaching the curriculum to make sure we were designing lessons and activities for our students in that environment. As we moved through the year, we realized that some of the biggest lessons we learned, the collaboration. We were encountering things that we had never encountered before. There was no direction manual. There were no step-by-step -step directions for us to follow. And so we had to use critical and creative thinking. We had to interact effectively. We had to exhibit positive characteristics um, in ourselves. And when you look at our documents in Forsyth County Schools, I'm describing our Forsyth County Schools leader profile. One of our biggest challenges and our biggest um, things that we do for our students is help prepare them for a future that they may not yet see. And that's exactly what we were doing as adults. We had to take what we knew and apply it to a new situation and do the best job we could. And so I'm really proud of what we did last year and how we exemplified those, those strategies and skills and characteristics that we hope our children will one day too. Well, thank you, Leanne. All right, Matt. Another area that was a major focus for Scythe County Schools was construction. Can you give us an update on where we're at? Well, last year, uh, to say the least, was eventful on the facility side <laughs> as well as teaching and learning. Um, first of all, I just want to start on the maintenance side. From what we went through last year, um, I'm extremely proud of all of our maintenance workers that were here every single day. Uh, you know that you can't work on an HVAC unit virtually. Uh, it doesn't work very well. Um, also paving and uh, flooring and everything and painting that we need to get done. Our maintenance guys came in every single day. Uh, they weren't able to work from home. They made that work because they have a lot of pride and from the facility side, we have a lot of pride in our schools that we were the largest metro district that was face-to-face -face learning. And from a facility side, I know 
Leanne mentioned from teaching and learning. From facility side, we're equally proud of that. Uh, knowing that we had our schools cleaned and prepared, we had all of our disinfectants uh, ordered 18 months in advance, we were well prepared and had our schools ready to go where people, uh, our staff and our students felt safe coming to school every single day. And we take a lot of pride in that. And we're excited to say that that's where we are moving into next year. We're taking those same uh, mitigation strategies into this school year. We're well stocked, well cleaned, well, and just prepared. Uh, even equally important is our air quality. We take pride in that. And me being only my third year of Forsyth County, I, you know, I highly respect Forsyth County for the money and resources they put into our air quality, um, that we circulate more fresh air than any other industry standard around the country. Um, that's something that Forsyth County has invested in well before COVID. It will happen through COVID and it will happen well after COVID. And we take a lot of pride in that as well. That's the maintenance side from a construction side, as you mentioned, that was also challenging um, that we still had to work through large projects as in East Forsyth High School, Hendricks Middle School, uh, Ace Academy, which are all gonna open on time for all of our community and our students to benefit. That was a struggle, but we made that a priority. Uh, you see Brian Daniel from Carroll Daniel Construction. We said failure's not an option. This is what we promised our kids and we delivered. So we took a lot of pride in that as well. And our new focal center uh, will open later this fall and New Hope is right along on schedule. So we're extremely pleased in that, but this summer was also filled with not just new construction. We did more paving projects, roofing projects, painting. Uh, a lot of our principals are excited to have those things done. Uh, we made it happen and we're very proud of that. So busy year, but we're from a facility side, very excited for Thursday. Very good. And I'm, I know from listen, listening to Mr. Wenning, your construction manager, mm -hmm. that even with the supply chain issues, uh, you, to get the schools done on time and open on time was very impressive. So thank you for that. Thank you. Another key design element of the new schools this year is our CTAE, or Career Tech and Ag Education, and also the opportunity to add new and expand our existing career pathways. So Valerie, can you tell us what's going on with CTAE across the whole system? Yeah, our focus of the school district and what we do is basically provide them simulated work environments in our career and technical education programs. And so you're in a facility today, you're going to be able to tour some of those labs, but that's our focus to ensure that our students get that opportunity while in high school to be able to feel like they're really in a work environment. Also a big piece of that is business and industry involvement. So this year as we open up East Forsyth High School, uh, that leads us into over 50 career pathways with, for our students with courses underneath those. So they take those in a sequence of three years. And at the end of that third year, they graduate with us with, with a certification. And some of those uh, certifications are those that your employees have in their workforce. So medical certifications, Adobe certifications, um, anything related to Microsoft, EMT, EMR, those types of certifications that your employees also have to have before they come to work. So that's extremely uh, beneficial for our students to have that when they leave. A majority of our students go directly into the workforce. They also go to college, they go to the military. So most of them know where they're headed when they leave us and we feel strongly that we've equipped them with those employability skills and all of our courses um, to be able to help them understand things like you know, basic office interactions or how uh, that work environment should work in that particular industry. Mock interview skills, uh, professional dress, those types of things are really important to us. Uh, another thing that's very important to us is to ensure that business and industry is heavily involved. And I'm going to give some examples of that. Uh, and, and most of you in the room have been involved with those programs. A lot of you have also been involved with our CTSOs. We have some of the largest CTSOs in the state and the country. So things like FBLA and DECA, F FFA, things that you might have also participated in. Uh, while you were uh, in school. You're going to be able to tour East Forsyth today, and so you're going to see some new programs for us in the district, things like construction and carpentry, uh, things like interior design, architecture. We've also opened an early childhood education lab here in this particular school that we're proud of. This will be the first one in a long time for Forsyth County to be able to do that, and we're partnering with our special ed program to be able to get um, that off the ground once school opens. 
So all in all, it's been just a very, very busy time for us. We've had a lot of renovations coming over the summer with some of our other labs, existing labs, just to update them again to constantly make sure that they replicate uh, you, uh, your involvement in our programs and your opinion of what's important in terms of equi equipment and things that they need access to. Uh, we also look forward to, if SPLOS 6 does pass, to be able to go in because we do have some labs that are in need of some, uh, you know, updates and, and replications. So we're working on, uh, you know, making sure that everything stays up to date and current with what you all feel is important as business owners. All right. Thank you. And I knew, Dr. Lowe, whenever I talk to a principal after you've been by and talk about a possible project there, like, it's like Santa Claus has been by that day. And so you're very much appreciated. <laughs> Leanne, we've reflected a lot about the new schools and the career pathways. Is there anything else you'd like to talk to us about coming up this year for teaching and learning? Well, I think you mentioned it, Kristen. Our, as we move into this year, um, we don't have as many families that are choosing the virtual option as we did last year. Um, we are still offering that option that, that families could choose, the, the virtual or the face-to-face -face option. But this year, we'll have less than 10%, whereas last year, we had about 40% of our families were in a virtual teaching option. I think we're in a really good place instructionally. We're one of the few school systems who allowed a choice for the full year last year. So our students received a full year of instruction based on the Georgia Standards of Excellence. That's our curriculum that we teach from. We also utilize in Forsyth County Schools what's called an instructional framework. And this year our instructional framework is focused on the monitoring phase. And so what that means is we wanna know where our students are, where we need them to be and how we're gonna get them there. This is the perfect year for that to happen with our instructional framework. And so as we, as we monitor where our students are, we'll set learning targets based on those Georgia standards. We'll develop success criteria so students will know where they are uh, in relation to that target. And we'll provide them with detailed feedback to help them see what they're doing really well and what they can get better on. Uh, and I think that's really important in a year like this where we're gonna have students coming back in different places. We're gonna have students who have faced uh, some trauma um, with the pandemic, we want to make sure that we're taking care of our students, not just intellectually and academically, but also socially and emotionally. One of our board governance goals is to teach the whole child. And so when we look at that, we want to make sure that our students are cared for in all areas. In education, we have two people that really guide our work. We have, um, you may have heard of them, Bloom and Maslow. Bloom is someone who helps guide our teachers with thinking skills, with understanding the level of thinking required to complete different tasks. So it could be anything from basic recall to synthesis and analysis of information. And Maslow talks to us about a hierarchy of needs and really stressing that students need to feel uh, physiologically um, and safe, that their physiological needs and their safety needs to be met before they can learn effectively. So our teachers this year will be working on both ends. They'll be working to create very high levels of learning based on Bloom's hierarchy of thinking, but they'll also be looking at the social emotional needs and making sure that our students are well cared for according to Maslow. I think it's going to be a great year, Kristen. All right. Thank you. Matt, it seems like the last 10, 15, 20 years, Forsyth County Schools has always been playing catch up with construction and renovation. With the 2018 and the, two th and the SPLOS 5 projects basically done, once we get New Hope Elementary done and the new Midway replacement done, we'll be caught up for a little bit, we think. So assuming SPLOS 6 passes, what would you think some of the maintenance and life cycle projects will be priorities in that SPLOS? Well, it all comes together actually perfect, Kristen, with uh, we're also due for our five-year facilities plan that we have to do a full district-wide evaluation of all of our needs for every school, new and old. Uh, that goes to the Department of Education to review, and that drives um, our SPLOS project list as well as it drives the, and dictates our funding for capital outlay that we get from the state. So we're very excited for that. It kind of lines up perfectly with the new SPLOS referendum that we hope continues to be passed by the Forsyth County voters. Uh, we need that badly to continue the work that needs, uh, work that needs done at our schools from painting to paving and uh, just to keep the state of our facilities that we have. Uh, East is a pr product of that. Uh, we're excited though to report out to our voters because I know the voting comes in in November for the new SPLOS. At the end of this coming summer, we will be fully completed with every project that was presented to voters 
at the last referendum. And to me, that's critical because if you're entrusting us into those tax dollars, we need to turn it right back around and give you what we promised. So to me, that we take big pride in that. Like Kristen said, uh, New Hope is under construction and knock on wood somewhere on time, uh, on schedule. We only have two other small projects that we're waiting to complete this school year uh, based on other renovations we have. So to me, that's what I take pride in to give back to the voters that we take going into November in a new SPLOST that when you provide that to us, we jump right on those projects and we don't sit and wait. We owe that to our kids and our parents on a daily basis. Uh, but as you mentioned, this new SPLOST coming up, there won't be a whole lot of East Forsyth High Schools. We won't be building a whole lot of new buildings. Um, it's going to be a great refresh five years for us. Yes, we'll be building a new Midway Elementary. Uh, Midway is one of our oldest and largest needs. And if, if you've ever tried to turn into Midway, that curve is getting worse and worse by the year. So we're excited for that new project, but even more uh, excited to do the refresh. We have life cycle things in all of our schools that need to get done. And over the next five years, we're ready to accomplish that. And I think with four children of my own in the school, I think it's critical that we keep even our older and existing schools just as a high level, state of the art learning environments as an East or a Hendrick. So we're very excited for the next refresh in the next five years. All right, thank you, Matt. I know you've only been in Elizabeth for three years, but you really have taken over and done a great job with the construction. All right, this is kind of the fun one. <laughs> so Don, one question that we get asked a lot is, what is that new building behind the Board of Education on Highway 9? So can you tell us a little bit about that and what it means for Scythe County Schools and to the community? Yeah, happy to. Uh, good morning. So the Focal Center will open in late fall of 2021. The Focal Center stands for Forsyth County Arts and Learning Center. It will be a versatile um, venue for music, theater, entertainment, and for learning. Learning for students and for learning adults alike. Um, the Focal Center is a two-story um, building, state-of-the-art theater. We'll seat just over 1,800 guests, as well as a black box theater that will seat roughly 200 guests. Um, the Focal Center will have rehearsal space, banquet space, meeting event space, dressing rooms, a catering kitchen, and a very large uh, lobby that we could use for meeting or for gallery space. Um, as the Focal Director in conjunction with Forsyth County Schools and the Focal Advisory, we've spent much of 2021 designing our mission and vision and making our pro programming goals for the future. So the Focal Center will be a premier venue for music and theater entertainment for our community. We're gonna be a hub for fine arts learning in the areas of theater, music, voice, dance, visual arts, and much more. We'll showcase and celebrate our local talent. We'll be building community partnerships and foster relationships with our arts community. We'll be a venue for schools and for the community to host events. And just think, um, Kristen, about those one-act plays or band competitions where our students and our parents have always traveled to other places in Georgia. Now we can host those uh, in Forsyth County. But the other thing that the Focal Center will be able to do is we'll be able to provide some new and unique programs. For example, the Focal Center uh, will be a Penguin Project chapter location. The Penguin Project is a unique and inclusive theater experience where our leading actors or artists, as we like to call them, are students with special needs. Um, we're also exploring how the Focal Center can be a tool that's used for things that we already have established in the area of fine arts, but we're also looking for opportunities to partner with other types of education and curriculum outside of the fine arts. Um, the Focal Center plans to partner with CTAE and give students an opportunity to experience marketing, hospitality, uh, management through event planning at the Focal Center. Additionally, we'll offer programs for our students and adults in our community outside of the school hours with guest speaker series, summer musical programs, and fine arts classes. I'm excited for this new adventure. It's an exciting time for Forsyth County Schools, our students, and our community, and especially for the fine arts in this community. We are clearly focused on Focal, and we can't wait to open our doors in the fall and for you all to see what we've got happening. Thank you, Don. I know, as you mentioned, I'm a band mom, so I'm not only excited as watching my daughter's band perform on the stage, but you mentioned being able to have 
I think local and regional events at that hub and I know I've had to get in the car and drive my child to and from different competitions and being able to host those events in Forsyth County is not only great for the students and the families but it's also great for local businesses because then you're buying gas and you're going to restaurants and getting coffee so it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Um, can you also talk a little bit more about how the community can get involved in focal and use focal as well? Yeah, absolutely. So there's lots of ways that you can get involved with the focal center. Um, so first of all, you can join us for our, our grand opening event, which will be December the 3rd. It'll be a ticketed event with food, Broadway entertainment, and tours of the facility. And then we're going to follow up on December the 4th for an all-day open house event uh, that will be free to the community. And on that open house event, we'll actually be um, featuring and highlighting many of our fine arts programs in Forsyth County Schools. Uh, you can join us by, um, uh, join us on social media through our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. Uh, you can be a focal patron, come see our shows and events. Um, if you're looking for a rental um, facility for your business or organization, consider the focal center. We'd certainly like to talk with you about that. And finally, you could be a focal donor. We have many donor and sponsorship opportunities, and I'd love to speak with you uh, about how you could sponsor a focal event or our focal um, space or some of our programming events. All right, thank you. And finally, Valerie, we know today's event is held in partnership with the Forsyth County Chamber of Commerce because it's our business partners so are so vital to Forsyth County Schools, but in particular to your college and career development department. Can you tell us a little bit more how they can get involved with your department to help our students succeed? Yeah, absolutely. Our focus this year, and our teachers came back last week, is CTA Connect. So we're reconnecting with each other. We're reconnecting with students who might not have been in the building for a while, but we're also a big piece of that is reconnecting with our business and industry. So that's really where uh, we ask the support and you all to get invested in our programs. And I brought some examples of how our partners are currently working with us, just some specific examples. Companies like Georgia Power, Northside Hospital, and other local businesses helping us with many things, but particularly our college and career fair that we do each year at the Forsyth Conference Center. Uh, local manufacturing companies like Siemens or Solvay helping us organize National Manufacturing Day. Forte Data Systems helping our aviation students build an aircraft. Mm -hmm. Central EMS allowing our students to experience the inside of an ambulance. A focus on health care and tours at Northside Hospital for Scythe. Our chamber and our Rotary members helping us with community mock interviews. A Beaver Toyota hosting our Skills USA and allowing us to bring work-based learning coordinators from all over the state to tour their facility. And then placement of student interns like Northside Hospital does, Carol Daniel Construction, Brandywine Printing, and many of you in the room. Uh, we're also proud of our internship and mentorship program and its continued growth. This year we'll have over 900 students across the district uh, that are currently looking or have recently, we hope, secured an internship for this upcoming school year. Uh, that's not a huge commitment for an employer, five to ten hours a week to let our students come either before they arrive at school or after school to work uh, in your place of employment. So I know we have a lot of employers in the room who have allowed us to place students uh, in your protected environment to help them again learn those simulated work environments. Uh, if you're not interested in hosting an intern or a mentorship student, there's other ways to get involved. Our advisory councils are we're always looking to grow that level of participation. I mentioned mock interviews earlier, uh, helping us with our career fairs, helping us transition our students with special needs that have already been mentioned. So there's a lot of different ways that you can sponsor or help uh, support CTAE. Uh, as you walk out today and, and take a right, you'll see a table set up there. Uh, we have a business and industry involvement guide, and so we brought those with us today. Um, there's also a small card with a QR code that takes you directly to our a kind of landing page for business and industry involvement. So all you have to do is go there, but you can also find any of us after the event today. Thank you, Valerie. And those partnerships are key. I know about every six months it surfaces on social media about the career fair and when students can kind of get an idea of what kind of jobs they can get from their career pathways. And everybody's like, oh, we should do this. And I'm like, we do, we do. <laughs> so it's very well received. Thank you, panel, for your time. Does anybody have anything you'd like to add or you're good to go? We thank our panel members for their time and effort. This is a very busy week for them. At this point, I'd like to welcome Dr. Bearden, our superintendent of schools, to the stage.
Thank you, Kristen. Uh, if you didn't catch our drift, we really need you to pass Law 6 in November. I don't know if you caught that or not, but it is critically important. Uh, as Matt said, we have a lot of life cycle needs uh, in our school system. It's much like taking care of your own home. You, know, you have to stay on top of maintenance. We only will have the one uh, school facility on the SPLOS project. That will be the new Midway Elementary. But a lot of that work that happens behind the scenes, we really need to get done. And we hope you will help us support SPLOS 6. I also want to uh, uh, echo what Kristen said and thank our panelists, um, Matt, Leanne, Valerie, and Don, uh, for, your, for your great work and your leadership in Forsyth County Schools. I'm very fortunate as your superintendent to be surrounded by a lot of superstars, and you heard from four of them today. And so again, guys, thank you very much. Appreciate you. They have given you a glimpse into the 21-22 state of our schools. It's the people who make Forsyth County Schools the school system that it is. And we appreciate the opportunity to share some of these dedicated individuals and their incredible work with you all today. If you are a new or returning student, a parent, our guardian, or a Forsyth County Schools employee here today are watching virtually, we're glad to have you part of the Forsyth County Schools family. If you are a business or a community partner, thank you for your commitment to our students and staff. As I say all the time, the best schools and the best school systems are the ones where home, school, and community work together as partners. We do that exceptionally well here in Forsyth County. The 2021 school year, as Kristen pointed out, looked very differently for us. But we continue to achieve quality learning and superior performance for all, and we look forward to the challenges and opportunities that lay ahead. As we close the program today, we're excited to share the next part of this event with you, a self-guided tour of the beautiful East Forsyth High School. This uh, school sits on 89.47 acres. It's one of the largest schools in the entire state of Georgia. It can accommodate 2,125 students. It has a full range of academic and athletic programs, as are other traditional high schools and also has a career development focus, as Valerie mentioned, that we refer to as HGTV. In your printed program, you'll find a map of the school, and you can walk throughout the building while employees will be in various areas, and a lot of our students are here today, and it was great to see them in their e-shirts, to tell you more about the classrooms and the other areas after we dismiss. If you're watching this event virtually, once again, please be sure to stay on the event and watch a virtual tour. As you have the opportunity to tour this beautiful facility and see some of the CTA labs in just a few minutes, we would love for those of you in attendance today to think about how your business, large or small, could partner with Forsyth County Schools. Valerie mentioned several ways earlier to partner with us. Feel free to reach out to her today or any of our career development coordinators so that they can get your contact information and get you plugged in. In fact, we have members of our college and career development team here uh, this morning. If you're part of that team, will you please stand so folks know who you are? Where are they? There they are. Okay, great. Thank you. They will be available at a table in the hallway after the event as well. As we get ready to transition, I think this video you're about to see will help paint a true picture of how your involvement can impact a student's future career plans. They say knowledge is power. We say knowledge empowers. And that's exactly what our CTAE programs do for our students at Forsyth County Schools, empowering them to choose from 17 career clusters specific to their area of interest. Mentorships and internships match to their individual education goals and career development partners that bridge the classroom with the community. Preparing students for success is the core component of Forsyth County Schools. Whether students plan to enter the workforce immediately or attend college after graduation, their high school course options build the foundation for their future, and we're here to help them succeed. Valerie mentioned our CTSOs, uh, what she did not say, and I want to share with you, I'm really proud of this. We have over 10,000 students in Forsyth County that participate in our CTSOs. We're the second largest school system in Georgia in terms of participation. The only school system that has more students is DeKalb County, and they're twice as large as we are. Uh, please also join me in thanking Kristen for her comments this morning. Kristen, great job with the State of the Schools. We appreciate that. 
Thank you all for being here today and supporting our school system. I hope you enjoy the self-guided tour. Lunch is available to pick up in the cafeteria. We would ask that you please stay seated and you'll be dismissed by row from the back by a chamber staff member. And also, let me once again say thank you to uh, our Chamber of Commerce for their continuous support, all of our business partners who work with us in Forsyth County. We could not be the school system we are today without all of your resources, talent, and support. It's greatly appreciated. You guys have a wonderful day. Thank you. East Forsyth High School. My name is Jeff Chafe, proud principal. I've been principal at South Forsyth High School, North Forsyth High School, and now have the privilege of opening East Forsyth High School. East Forsyth High School will be Forsyth County School's seventh traditional high school. We will open our doors with grades 9 through 11 with about 1,100 students this coming school year. The school was designed to house 2,125 students with the potential for an addition to hold 2,475 students. East Forsyth High School is our first high school which will have a early learning center that was built and designed for our early childhood education program. We plan on using this early learning center to help serve the needs in our community and have families of three and four year olds come to school twice a week so they can be better prepared for kindergarten. East Forsyth High School will have a robust fine arts department, including theater, chorus, band, uh, fine arts, visual arts. Come inside, take a look at our amazing theater. High School is designed to be a warm, inviting place, so you'll see a lot of natural wood tones and color throughout the school. We chose earth tones to represent and reflect the serenity around the lake area. You'll see wood tones on the ceilings, natural colors in the tile, and natural colors in the brick. of our campus is our Be Better support services. We are actually going to have a community school center integrated into the school here. Our three main paper organizations working with us are ones that you know of, The Place of Recite, Mentor Me North Georgia, and Family Ties. Another key feature of our campus is our outdoor courtyard. This courtyard attaches to our cafeteria, our art classrooms. We see this as a hub of student activity and a great way to get outdoors and enjoy um, the environment during the school day. We are the Broncos. Our colors are orange and navy. This was a nod to East Forsyth Bennett Park and the Bennett Park community. 
where a lot of our families grew up playing youth sports, to have that be the mascot in our school colors. So we're proudly the Broncos.